From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Ippy Presents. What a very, very special time it is for Jack and for me to come into your home and say we trust that you'll have a blessed, blessed Thanksgiving with family and friends, neighbors, whomever you might have in your home. And uh, that's my first headline here before me. Thanksgiving, a time to remember and be thankful. Also, USA Today, Eight compelling reasons Christ is coming soon. Well, that's something to be very thankful for, isn't it? And one burst and the world goes dark. Why? We will discuss all of those things and much, much more in this program. But let me just say that Thanksgiving was always a very special time in my family. And uh, I'm so grateful that my father taught us to be grateful to be thankful at this time of the year, not just to have a, a dinner and enjoy it, but be grateful, grateful for our Savior, for our family, for our country, the whole thing. And I think Jack fell in love with my mother's cooking before he fell in love with me, actually. It was simultaneous, Rachella. <laughs> okay. Look at that beautiful woman oh, sitting there. Come on, Jack. And that beautiful turkey on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, I kept coming because mom made those great meals, especially southern fried chicken. She was a real southerner. But Rexella, mm -hmm. I remember when your dad, because I ate too much one day, put a note on my plate, All Proverbs right. 23, verse 2, put a knife to your throat <laughs> if you be a man given to appetite. Ooh, boy. <laughs> but I was getting way up there and he was right. <laughs> don't, don't stuff yourself. It's for the turkey to get stuck, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. All right. Well, I have a blessed Thanksgiving. Enjoy it with family and with friends. Be grateful most of all for the Lord. In USA Today, there was a tremendous article, and it is right on target. Take a look at this. A compelling reasons why Christ is coming very soon. I'm not going to take time to read them all. We're going to go back and forth in just a moment. I'm going to ask him to give me a reference for every single one of those. Eight compelling reasons why Christ is coming soon. Let's go to that first one, if you will, please. Israel's rebirth, Jack. Oh, that's Matthew 24, 32. And Jesus said, Learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. But he went on to say, So likewise, when you shall see all these signs in connection with Israel becoming a nation and Jerusalem being captured by the Jewish people, then I will return. And ladies and gentlemen, Israel became a nation in 1948 and they took over Jerusalem in June of 1967. These are the two greatest signs in history and they all tie in with the coming of the Lord. If you want to shock, turn in the program for New Year's week. What God is revealing me is unbelievable. All right, Jack, that number two on the list of the eight compelling reasons, plummeting morality. How sad. Jesus said iniquity shall abound, Matthew 24, 12. And I'll tell you how vile and filthy it's getting in America and all the world. Sex is rampant. And all of these drugs, ecstasy, and all the nonsense they're promoting on television to get you stimulated is wrong. And Ephesians 4.19 pictures it, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all sexual uncleanness with greediness. They can't get enough. You see, they're talking about Viagra and all the bunk all the time. 
Oh, you know, Jack, we need to, well said, by the way, watch what our children are watching on television. Be very careful. Then number three, famines, violence, and war. Jesus said there should be famines, plural, globally, Matthew 24, 7, and concerning violence and war, he said in Luke 21, 9, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrors, and wars and revolutionaries, be not terrified. Don't be afraid. These things must first come before what? Verse 27, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's the rapture of Revelation 4, 1, when he says, come up hither and we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now, number four, increase in earthquakes. It's increased to thousands every year, Jim. Well, that's what Jesus said. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places, diversified areas simultaneously. And the United States Geodetic Service tells us now there are a million quakes and aftershocks annually across the entire world. And that is also found in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, chapter 8, verse 5, chapter 11, verses 13 and 19, and the greatest earthquake in history in Revelation 16, 18. But guess what? It's the return of the Lord, and His feet hit the Mount of Olives, and it breaks down the middle from east to west, the coming of Christ. All right, and number five, the explosion of travel and education. Well, this is interesting. God told Daniel, close that book, seal your book until the time of the end. And no one ever understood what it meant until our day. And then he tells us what it would be in our time, proving that it was the closing just before Christ's return. And he said, many shall run to and fro, world travel and knowledge shall be increased. You've seen it before your own eyes in our day. Mm, how about counterfeit spirituality? That is the explosion of cults and the occult. Jesus again, Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. False Christ and false prophets jumping up everywhere. Centralization of the world, the new world order. Oh, that's Revelation 17, 10. Seven governments, the final one is the new world order, the European Union, the revived Roman Empire. And you find it in Revelation chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, 3, 7, 12, and 16. It's here! Oh, it is here. <laughs> and number eight on the list here, increase in both apostasy and faith. Apostasy, what's going on now is pitiful. 2 Peter 2, 1, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, secretly shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus that bought them. And guys like Bishop Spung of the Episcopal Church runs across American Canada tearing Christ apart. And he's one of these last day hypocrites and he's going to meet God soon. All right, Jack, now we've been speaking about of those who are looking for the coming of our Savior. Oh, how we can be grateful and thankful for that. But, you know, the rabbis have said for hundreds of years that there would be two great signs of their Messiah coming. Here's one. Buick puts muscle in Regal GS. Hmm, I wonder what that means as far as the coming of their Messiah. As a sky crow squadron flies an exclusive look at the IAF's electronic warfare unit. Again, Abbas, Palestinians will accept only Jerusalem as our capital. And Israel's Netanyahu, no concession on East Jerusalem. Netanyahu turns to Bible and tussle over Jerusalem. And Abbas, Israel igniting Jerusalem. Let's deal with Jerusalem one more time. Iran says Muslims must act over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, a very, very important city in the light of prophecy. And the Jews looking for their Messiah. Now, Jack, would you put these all together, starting with this the car? This is all about the coming of the Lord, and this prophecy about the car is 2,640 years old, but it's happened in our 20th century when Henry Ford created the first car. And Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says, The chariot shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation when he prepares to return to earth. He says they shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broadways. They shall seem like torches, headlights and taillights, and they'll run like lightning. Now the airplane, 
That prophecy was written 2,700 years ago, and it's all here in our day. Who are these that fly as a bird? Isaiah 60, verse 8. But this is really it. And Rexel, I was shocked when I saw that headline because the Israeli forces now call this new plane with which they can perhaps win all the wars Sky Crow, a bird's name. Now watch this. Again, 2,700 years ago, Isaiah 31, 5, as the birds flying. <laughs> so will the Lord defend Jerusalem. They got the Air Force waiting. Believe me, it's the most powerful Air Force in the world. Here's the meaning of all of it. Jerusalem is going to be the reason that World War III begins because they divide it between the Jews and the Palestinians. Joel 3, verse 2. And we have a president who says, we're going to give Jerusalem to the Palestinian Muslims. But that goes against God's word. Netanyahu said, I just read my Old Testament again. 813 times Jerusalem belongs to us, the Jews. With the New Testament included, it's 930 times. So this war is going to break out. And so the war comes, and as you've heard me say so often, it begins with Russia's march against Israel, Ezekiel 38, 39, then China, Revelation 16, 12, and chapter 9, verses 14, 18, then all nations. But listen to me. When it's all settled, Jerusalem will belong to the Jews under the rulership of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh God says, I'll set my king upon the holy hill of Jerusalem. Psalm 2, verse 6. The Redeemer shall come to Jerusalem. Isaiah 59, 20. Sing and rejoice, O daughters of Jerusalem, for lo, I'll come and dwell among you, saith the Lord. You can't miss it. When his feet hit the Mount of Olives, as I said earlier, and there's a great earthquake, the greatest in history, he lands right in front of Jerusalem where he's going to reign. And that's why Luke 1, 32 and verse 33 says, as Gabriel spoke to the Virgin Mary, your son shall be great and he'll sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem and he'll reign over the house of Israel, the Jews, forever and forever and forever and of his kingdom there'll be no end and that's why Jerusalem will be called the city of the great king, Matthew 5.35. Boy, oh. this is all prophecy. The Lord's coming. It's near. Yes, oh yes, and how we need to be thankful for the blessed hope that we have in the fact that Jesus is going to return again. We are going to be offering you a very, very wonderful offer uh, entitled Socialism Exposed. Take a look, please, as to what is really on this DVD. I really want you to have it, friends, more than anything that I've offered in a long time. Socialism Exposed. America's infatuation with socialism is dangerous. In a socialist state, the government controls everything. Personal freedoms are surrendered, family values decimated, and your faith could even be forced underground. Yet young people are demanding socialism replace capitalism. Socialism is the transition point between capitalism and godless communism, and it is coming. Dr. Jack Vanapie foresaw the new rise of socialism and wanted you to know that not only does socialism spell disaster for America, it is also a sign of the latter days. He left instructions and video teaching for the creation of the shocking Socialism Exposed TV special, now available on DVD. This uncut and unedited version contains significant new material we weren't allowed to air on TV. It's critical you get this information and share with friends, family, and your church. Socialism is an unbiblical system that leads to the rise of the Antichrist and the one world government predicted in Bible prophecy. Get socialism exposed now. Call 1-800-JVI-7777 or go to jvim.com now to order your video. Featuring Drs. Jack and Rex Sullivan MP and expert Dr. Frank Wright, this video expose is vital to the future of our nation. You'll be helping us warn our beloved country and proclaim the hope of the gospel. A couple more things I want to add here, and that is on the DVD, you're going to be seeing so much more 
about what is happening in the world, maybe even in your family. We're going to be talking about God's remedy for our lives. And also, I'm going to be enclosing Jack's little booklet, Socialism Exposed, with your order. So please call or write to us right away, and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Very important, please make the call right away. And uh, here's our announcer to tell you once again how you can receive the wonderful offer of the week, Socialism Exposed. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order Socialism Exposed. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Heller. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you, make the call or write to me right away. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you, and also I'll be sending you this little book that, that Jack did, Socialism Exposed. You need to have it. And now, friends, oh my, oh my, our time goes so quickly. I trust that uh, we could just be with you longer someday, but there is a fear, I have to say, among our scientists about something that Jack was trying to explain to me ahead of time, the possibility of a catastrophic electromagnetic pulse effect on our nation. And here you see it. One burst and the world goes dark. Scientists, politicians take the threat of the electromagnetic pulse very, very seriously. That's USA very Today. Very seriously. Let's take a look at this. At risk are the more than 200,000 miles of high voltage transmission lines that cross North America supplying 1,800 utilities, the power for TVs, lights, refrigerators and air conditioners in homes and for the businesses, hospitals, and police stations that take care of us all. Going on. The electric grid's vulnerability to cyber and to other attacks is one of the single greatest threats to our national security. Representative Ed Markey, Democrat from Massachusetts, said in June as he introduced the bill to the House of Representatives. Now that is a quote from him, one of the greatest threats that we have on our nation. Uh, Jack was explaining to me about the electromagnetic. Jack, can you explain it to all of us? Well, one burst and it'll be all over. As you read, 200,000 miles covering our country and everything turns dark, there's no electricity, there's no TV, no refrigeration, no heating. God help us when that happens. And they say if this little Hitler in Iran gets the bomb, uh, we're going to be very sorry if we don't stop him first because he would use it on the United States of America. He's boasted about that because we are the great Satan and Israel is the little one. Now, do you know, realize that this can also happen through sunbursts and NASA's afraid that could happen? could also happen through cyber attacks nationally and internationally, but we're really afraid of the electromagnetic pulse. Here is a country like Iran, and they bring their ship within 200 miles of our country, and that's allowable by law. And they shoot an atom into space 300 miles high above Washington, D.C. or Omaha, Nebraska, and as the gamma rays mix with the mixtures of the exploding bomb and come to Earth and meet with the magnetic field, it darkens everything in the entire nation, including Canada and perhaps Mexico. Imagine what could happen, ladies and gentlemen, and did you know that that is found in Revelation 6, 12? I beheld when they opened the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood, darkening effects. And of course, 
we read about that from the words of Jesus in Luke 21, verse 25. He says, There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and in space. Verse 26, Men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken as that explosion takes place. And everything begins to come downward and darkens the world. You find it in Joel chapter 2. Verse 28 to 31, you find it in Acts 2, 19 to 21. And I'll tell you, Jesus pinpoints the exact time in Matthew. Listen to him in chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and there'll be darkness on the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm glad that Jesus may come, and I hope he comes before it all happens. Believe me, because it's going to be a mess here. The cyber effect, really. You folks just say, I'm not worried. It never happened in my lifetime. Don't tell me about these signs. You are really loose when it comes to really knowing intellectually what this Bible teaches and then believing it. Something's wrong if you can't see when the newspapers USA Today is saying these things. Forget the Bible. At least believe them. Oh, yes. Well, that's a great prophecy in the Bible that something like this could happen. Well, you heard me speak about the hate speech law that the United Nations is proposing right now. Well, here's a follow-up on a trial in the Netherlands. New extremism emerges in Europe. Now, this Dutchman, Wilders, is on trial, and they're proposing a hate speech speech law in the United Nations. Jack will speak about that. Here's something. Clark issues call to kill Americans. To kill Americans. This Including is what Including the Detroit area. And here is something. Venezuela is a training ground for the terrorists. Now that's not so far away from the United States. They say we can reach the United States from Venezuela. It won't be hard. And there are terrorists training there right now. Oh Jack this hate speech law is a dangerous thing. Oh, I'm afraid of it. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to be telling others about it. It's already in existence in Holland. This politician heading up 24 members of the party there in the Netherlands is on trial because he said something against the Quran. And the sad part of this hate speech thing is it all favors Islam and does not favor Christianity. Look what's even happened in our country, all right? Billy Graham's son, Franklin, Billy's done more for America and the world than any other man proclaiming Christ to the nations, had his son canceled for the day of prayer because he talked about the tragedy of 9-11 and how these 19 Arabs in the plane commandeered it and 3,000 of our people died, good, American, and other citizens. And right now there are over 10,000 family members still warning, but don't you talk about it as hate speech against Islam. We had Juan Williams, a journalist, and he said, when I see these people in their garb, I get frightened. Wow, he was fired. You see, you can't say anything against them because that's where our president is. He says you cannot speak against Muslims. You cannot speak against Islamic terrorists. You don't call them by that name. The Pentagon has been formed. Don't do it. The heads of the security of America, don't use it. And that is sad, ladies and gentlemen. We got to know who our enemy is and what they're up to. Uh, Locke says, I want to hit Paris, we want to hit England, and we want to hit the suburbs of Detroit. And that would probably be the Jewish population because they are not favored either. It's only Islam that's favored. And Obama is not only voting for it with the United Nations, but he says he's leading the charge. And Hillary said, I'm opposed to that. We still must have free speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in the last hours and Jesus is about to return. And you'll not be able to say Jesus is the only way. That will become hate speech according to Issue My Glory, Protestant Magazine, and Dr. Franklin Graham. Oh, Jack, so well said. And now he puts all these things in perspective. And it means that Jesus is coming very soon. The Bible's so clear. It points out all these headlines that we see every day in our paper. Jesus is coming soon. We need to be ready. 
I wonder, are you really ready for the coming of the Lord? What a wonderful promise that is. Jack, you need to show us, in the light of all you've been talking about today, how to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Do you believe this Bible in Jesus? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come to God the Father but by me. Will you do it right now? Oh, precious Jesus, I believe you. You are the only way. And today I want you as my Savior. I love what you did for me, Jesus, and now I trust in the merits of your holy shed blood to wash away my sin. Jesus, come into my heart now. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. 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 Now, there is my address. Will you write to me, please, if you prayed that prayer? Because I want to say congratulations. First Steps in a New Direction will be in the mail absolutely free. I want you to walk with the Lord and have His peace in these troublesome days, knowing that you're His child and ready for the coming of the Lord. Oh, friends, I just read this little saying, and I want to share it with you because it certainly is so very true for my own heart. Thankfulness is the parent of all other virtues. How we need to be thankful for everything. I look forward to being in your home again next week. I'm thankful for that. And until then, remember, God cares for you. I'm thankful for that. He cares for me. And so do we. Bye-bye.